questions, please? Who will tell me what it's okay? It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to make mistakes. We are here to learn, okay? You will not be marked on this or anything, okay? And I won't scold you if you get wrong. I know you're in grade six. You haven't even started your grade six and you're doing this for the first time, so it's okay. So please, uh, uh, come up, come forward and uh, volunteer. Tell me, what is a type one binary ionic compound? Whatever you understand. Okay, tell me honestly, who watched the recording of the last class? Who watched the recording of the last class? Come on. In the chat box, you guys were talking a lot. What happened? Come on. Okay, Momina. Okay, Javeria. Good job. Javeria? Javeria, I'm trying to unmute you. Yes. Yes, Javeria, please. Uh, uh, can you kindly tell us uh, what is a type 1 binary ionic compound? Uh, it's like, uh, it's an ionic compound that has, that has. Uh, it's okay. It's, so what do you understand by an ionic compound? That it has a cation and an anion. Okay, very good. So what, what keeps the cations and anions together? The negative and positive charges. Attraction between the negative and positive charges, okay? Electrostatic attraction. Electrostatic meaning that attraction due to the opposite, due to the charges, right? Okay? Yes. Yes, okay. And so what do we mean by binary? Do you know the meaning of the word binary? What does binary mean? It means, it means that there's only two elements. Right, exactly. So we know the meaning of ionic and we know the meaning of compound. What's the meaning of compound? Uh, yeah, you're doing good job, Javeria. The, the two elements that make up Right. right, two different elements, okay? Add the word different, two different elements which bind together. So we know the meaning of compound, two different elements binding together. Ionic is when you have electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions. Oppositely means one is positive, the other is negative, right? Binary means made up of only two, okay? We we're not talking about three, okay? And then type one, do you remember in my last class? I mentioned type one. Yes. What was it? Uh, it these compounds don't have different uh, different types of valence. Very good. Very good. Javeria, did you did you prepare? Did you prepare? Yes, I also watched your video yesterday. Very good. That's why you're able to answer. I can see it. I can see it. That's why you're able to answer. So you know, I don't know these students you know I'm, I'm talking to everybody i don't know the uh, uh these students um and you know the ones who participate uh in my classes but they're doing wonderful job momina is one of them and then javeria and then we have a few others i'm not i, I can't remember all the names but uh i want others also to participate in the same way okay and because you know if you don't participate you won't benefit and I won't keep you in my classes if I see that you are just silent observers. Because you know, your videos are off. What do I know? Whether you're paying attention or you're sleeping, you know, or you are you know, just doing something else on the net. Why no? I don't know, right? So if you won't participate, I will, I will take it that you are not paying attention. So I won't keep you in my class for long. Okay, this is for everybody. I want people to participate. I want raised hands. And today I'm gonna to ask questions whether you raise hands or not. Okay, I wanna know if you're with me. That's important for me, okay? So, okay, Javeria, very good job. Uh, please uh, mute yourself. Okay, so type one, meaning to say that they have only one charge. Their ions have only one charge. Uh, and remember, this 
periodic table that I made. And I told you that the transition metals are the ones that have more than one charge, okay? And also these group four. Group four and these transition metals have more than one charge, except for, except for, there's, there are always exceptions in science. There are always exceptions to the rules. Silver and zinc are exceptions, are exceptions, okay? Silver has positive one charge always in its ions, and zinc has positive two charge in its ions all the time. So except for these two, except for these two, the rest of these have more than one charge, as well as the group four, okay? And so uh, type one is group one and group two and silver and zinc. These together make type one binary ionic compounds. Okay, who's going to tell me how to write the formula for barium fluoride? Come on, quick. Okay. Uh, Vara. Vara. Yes. Okay, Rahman, um, yes, okay. Yes, Vara, I'll help you out, it's okay. What is barium, do you have the periodic table with you? Hello, I'm talking to you. Vara? Are you there with me? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, miss. Yes, uh, uh, do you have the periodic table with you? Yes, miss. Okay, so can you help me write the formula for barium fluoride? Um, yes. Barium is barium has a charge of two plus. Very good. And um, and what's the symbol? Since it's in Ba. Okay, good job. So it has a charge of two and plus. Then, yes, and then fluorine is in group seven, so it has a charge of minus one. Okay. So then to balance this, we can see that barium, barium, um, there are two atoms of barium, and so we also need two atoms of um, fluorine, so we add another fluorine. Very good job, okay. Which gives us, which gives us barium plus two and um, fluorine minus two. Yeah, okay. And so, and so totally we can see that they're canceling out, and then so we get the formula, BA, FL2. F what two? FL2. F2, L? sorry. Is is, F2, is there... sorry. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We are learning. There's no L, okay? There's no L with F. Okay. Good job. So uh and then I should put a small two on the right uh on the right lower cor corner of F because there are two of F. So the small numbers on the right lower corners of the symbols represent the number of ions or atoms that are there within the molecule, right? Or the number of atoms within the molecule, within the particle. Okay, good job. So this was type one binary ionic compound. I did share the worksheets in the group. Okay, so go ahead and try to solve them uh, for your practice. The more you'll practice, the, the better you'll get at it, okay? And in the same, you know, when you'll practice, you're learning a lot of things at the same time. Not only are you learning how to write the formulae, but you're learning symbols. You're learning their charges. You're learning in which group they are, okay? By repeatedly, you know, practicing, things will get on your fingertips. So it'll be easier for you. Okay, so this was type one. Now let's uh, recap type two. What was type two? Who's gonna recap? What were type two binary compounds? Okay, what are type two binary compounds? Who's gonna answer? Okay, I want somebody to answer me. Ifra? Yes, Ifra. It's okay, it's okay. I'll help you out. Yes, Ifra, can you please tell me what are type two binary compounds? Yes, Ifra? 
Yes. I cannot hear you, Ifra. Okay, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Hello. Come on. It's this is wasting our time. Arsalan. Okay, Manal. Thank you. Yes, Manal. Yes, Manal. The teacher? Yes. The type two binary. Yes. Bionic is. Yeah. The, the okay. I'll, okay, I'll give you. Hint. Yes, I'll give you a hint. They're written like this. Did you watch my last class? Yes, teacher. Okay. Then you should be able to answer this. This is easy. When do we write these uh, numerals, these Roman numerals in parentheses, in brackets? When do we write them? Do you know? Uh, teacher, uh, type 2 binary iconic, ionic compounds, like they can have multiple. Uh, yes, yes. They can have different forms. No. They, have, they have ions. Very good, yes. They have charges. They have ions yeah. with more than one charges, right? Yes. That, yes. So I they have ions. Fine. Yes, they have ions with multiple charges. So why do we write? Uh, why do we write this in in Roman numerals in brackets? It's because because uh, they have multiple charges. To uh, so we have to like differentiate. Right. Very good. Yes, Abu Bakr. Thank you, Jazakallah Khairan. Yes. Okay. You 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 answered it correctly. So that's okay. See, you you came forward and so you learned, right? Okay. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. But I do want your interest. I want your interest. Okay. So type two binary compounds, and I can see raised hands, and I'm very happy to see them. And you will be given a chance. Okay. So okay. Uh, type 2 binary compounds, the metals have more than one type of charge. So the reason why we put these Roman numerals in, in parentheses, what is parentheses? A good word for brackets. Same thing as brackets. So try to learn good words. Okay, so these Roman numerals are written in parentheses. Why? Because they indicate the, ch uh, the charge on the ion, right? So this means to say that cobalt has a charge of plus three. So... Saad, Saad, you will help me write the formula for cobalt selenide. Hello, Mash. Yes, yes, Saad, Bita. Can you please help me uh, write the formula for cobalt 3 selenide? Yes. Okay. Can you show me the periodic table? Okay. Here you have cobalt is a transition metal. Because you see, that's why it has more than one. It charge. has three plus charge, plus three. Very good. Very good. I like it. It has three plus charge. And how did you know? Because of this. Because of the Roman numerals. Very good. Right. And then we have this. Selenide. Okay. Selenide is, where is selenide? Here. This is selenide. It has minus two charge. Very good. Yes. Minus two charge. Okay. Now what, what should be by next step? So are they balanced? No. Okay. Why is it important to balance them? Because, no. because they form one compound, one particle and particles uh, try to be neutral. Okay. So they should add up to zero. That's very important. Remember the charges. Okay. Yeah, the charges on the ions, that's why they're combining together to neutralize each other, okay? So they're, they should add up to zero, okay? So then what should I do? Now this is plus three, this is minus you should three. Add a, you should okay. add a selenide, another one. Okay, selenide, another one, okay? Uh, should I give you a hint? Uh, yes, miss. Okay, see, see, 
have you done math you've done math uh, you know like uh, addition subtraction of uh, fractions yes. so what do you do when you are um, uh, adding uh, fractions which have different denominators what do you do you multiply with each other to get a common number right so let me multiply yes. minus 2 by 3 and plus 3 by 2 so i will get plus 6 here and minus 6 here right and they can neutralize if i if i multiply minus 2 by 3 and plus 3 by 2 i will get 6 right plus 6 minus 6 so that means yes. so so that means if i have 3 of selenide okay and then 2 of cobalt i'll write it here yes i'll write it here so that you understand if i write 2 of cobalt here and uh, three sel uh, selenides here then what what do i add up with two minus two six. minus two minus minus six very good and plus, and plus six right right yes yes so what did i do i just simply cross multiplied so you know, in order to find out how many seleniums and how many cobalt so i multiplied two by three and three by two is that okay, miss. did you understand this yes miss okay so what is the final formula how many cobalts and how many selenides six no no now what is the final formula tell me the final formula uh uh c o okay capital c and small o okay this is cobalt okay. you will not write big o why okay. why because the big o is a symbol for oxygen okay so we don't want to confuse that so small o and then yes how many and then how we many, how many cobalt two, uh, six two no, no. yeah two ions you will tell me the number of ions okay not the charge okay, okay. yes so two cobalt okay and then next uh selenide S yes e. S capital e. s and small e yes very and good. there's three and three and ions three. three very good so this is done and remember i also told you a shortcut in my last class yes the crisscross yes very good so you could have you know just simply you just could have done that. right you could have done that too so this here and this here so cobalt two uh, se three. three okay thank you very much what's your name again saad saad Yes, thank you very much. Okay, keep participating. Okay. Okay, miss. Okay, so uh, we have done this. Okay, I explained this in detail to you in the last class, and I shared this, this, uh, all these um, practice questions with you in the group. So go ahead and practice them at home. Okay, so I'm moving on. Okay. So now I want to talk about writing formulae for polyatomic ionic compounds okay writing formulae for polyatomic ionic compounds now they are ionic again that means ionic means attraction between positively and negatively charged particles why i'm using particles is because part they can be you know uh they can be simple one atom ion or they can be multiple atoms what does poly mean poly means many poly means many so poly means multiple okay Ato atomic atoms atomic atoms so that means multiple atoms or many atoms many atoms together form particles and they these particles have a net charge Okay, what do I mean by this? I'll show you. I've made a few diagrams. Okay, let me grab the diagrams for you. For example, this, for example, this is a nitrate. First, let me, okay, this is a list of the polyatomic ions that you will come across. Okay, these are simple polyatomic ions that you will come across in ordinary chemistry. Now, there are a lot of other polyatomic ions, but these are enough for you at this level. Okay, so can you see that all of them have a negative charge? And can you see that they are made up of multiple atoms? For example, sulfate. Okay, let's, let's talk about sulfate. Four oxygen atoms and one sulfur. 
and the whole thing has negative two charge phosphate four oxygen atom and one phosphorus atom the whole thing has three minus charge nitrate three oxygen atom one nitrogen the whole thing has negative charge why do we learn them in this way because they behave as one remember this in ordinary normal chemical reactions they don't separate they stay together they behave as one particle remember this so three so for for example this is carbon and then three oxygens will be attached to the carbon and they will in all the reactions they will behave as one they will go on you know wherever they'll go they'll go together okay pakki inki dosti hai pakki okay ye chhodne wale nahi hai ek dusre ko they don't leave each other okay they stay together and they have this charge together okay and they are very important you you should remember the charges on them you should remember their names and you should remember the formulae okay if you find it hard to remember this there are a lot of videos on the net on youtube that will that can help you in memorizing them in remembering them okay if you want i can i can also do them with you okay uh but due to shortage of time uh i will just ask you to you know a search on the internet on youtube and there are many different ways of memorizing their names their formulae their charges and see which one you like and go ahead and follow it okay and but the thing is you should remember this okay by the way if you keep practicing writing formulae that will also help you in memorizing them the more formulae you write the more charges you remember the more names you remember the more formulae you'll remember okay so practice is key okay practice is key okay so now for example okay another thing i want you to uh, concentrate on is all these po um polyatomic ions that have oxygen for example for example nitrate has oxygen okay nitrite has oxygen phosphate has oxygen sulfate has oxygen sulfide has oxygen all these that have oxygen carbonate has oxygen they are ending with the suffix eight they are ending with the suffix eight i want you to appreciate this i want you to know this okay except for this except for this one okay why because we already had an eight and so you know this is a different uh thing by the way this you won't come across this very commonly not at grade six and seven okay but later okay so i will not confuse you with this but uh but you should know that usually the ions that have oxygen in them usually most of them have eight with them so whenever you come across this eight you should know that the polyatomic ion must have an oxygen must have an oxygen okay now hydroxide is the only polyatomic ion that has ide in it but uh uh yeah i mean it has oxygen but it's still the suffix is ide it's not eight this is the only exception okay this is an exception okay and another thing i want you to notice here is that this ammonium ion ammonium i'm sorry something spilled here and so it got ruined ammonium is nh4 positive charge on it ammonium is the only polyatomic ion with a positive charge the rest of all of them are negatively charged and even if you uh, search on the internet there is a whole big list of polyatomic ions but you won't see any other positively charged polyatomic ion this is the only one this is the only polyatomic ion which is positively charged okay now i want to show you because i want you to know how they look for example this is carbonate okay this is carbonate this is how they are arranged okay carbon in the middle with three oxygen atoms attached to this carbon atom the whole ion has two minus charge on it now whatever the reaction this carbonate will stay together this carbonate will stay together now why am i telling you all of this is because 
after we learn how to write formulae and after we learn how to balance chemical equations, we are going to do periodic table. And then, you know, we will come across the reactions that, you know, different group metal, uh, different group elements take place. I mean, uh, uh, participate. And so, uh, you know, many students have problem writing formulae. They write all the wrong formulas. And when they come across the names in questions, they write all the wrong formulae. If you don't, if you cannot write a correct formula, you will not get the correct answer. Okay, you cannot write correct equations. Okay, so that's why it, this is very, very, very important. Okay, I cannot emphasize on this enough. Okay, so even if you spend your whole summer vacation learning on how to write formulae and naming them and balancing equation, that will be worth it. When your grade six will start, you will be thankful to Allah that you know he let you learn this okay usually schools don't take classes on this this is not taught as a separate topic which it should be which should be okay so this is carbonate okay and then okay where did my nitrate go here is the nitrate can you see nitrate so you we have n nitrogen atom in the middle with three oxygen atoms bonded to the central nitrogen atom. So nitrogen is one, so I won't write anything because we don't write one, but there are three oxygen atoms, so I will write three here. And the net charge is minus one. Net charge is minus one. The whole, this whole thing has a negative, extra negative charge on it, the whole thing, okay, minus, okay? Now you might have this question that why is it that they have a charge? Why is it that they have a charge? It's because the whole group has one electron greater than the total number of protons in the whole thing, okay, in the whole group. The, uh, the number of electrons is one greater than the number of protons. That's why there is a net negative charge on this. Now, why do they combine together this way? And you know, like if they cannot be neutral, why do they combine like this, you know, at the first place? Well, that will be dealt with later when we will uh, learn how to draw dot and cross diagrams. Okay, dot and cross, like, you know, where you make the diagrams of atomic structures, where they are sharing electrons with each other. When we'll do that, then you will learn. But for now, just, you know, understand that this is, you know, that's the charge they have, okay. Also, I want you to know that how, what sort of bond is keeping these oxygen atoms stuck to nitrogen? What sort of bonding? Is it ionic? Remember the two types of bonding we have done. One is the electrostatic attraction between the positively and the negatively charged ions. The other is electron sharing, right? Ionic and covalent. So do you think this is ionic or this is covalent? These are covalent bonds. What do we mean by covalent, Sidra? Which are sharing. Yes, covalent means that they are sharing, right? They are sharing electrons. And remember, which, which bond is stronger, ionic or covalent? Covalent. Say it. Covalent. Covalent. And why was it that covalent were stronger? Because they were sharing. Peter, loudly? No, I gave a very uh, specific a reason why covalent bond is stronger than ionic. Please speak up. Why is covalent stronger than ionic? Who will tell me? Okay, Ammar. Okay, Ammar, beta, it's okay if you don't know the answer, but I'm unmuting you. Yes, teacher, I know, I can tell. Teacher, okay, because... very good. It is because okay. in covalent bond, the, when they are joined, if they separate, they can't live without each other. If there is an ionic compound, even if they separate, they can live without each other. Okay, why can they live without each other, the ions? Because? 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 Come on. Yes, you know it. Because they have got the uh, the total number of you know electrons that they can have in their outermost shell, so they are stable. Say it. Yes, teacher, I got it. No, no, but you have to st tell me. You have to tell everybody. Say it. 
Amar, acha okay, Sidra, you 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 explain now. Um, it is because the ionic uh, bonds they don't they don't as they have gotten all the electrons. Not they ionic need. bonds, ions. The ions they have gotten all the electrons they need, so they don't actually need in each other. But why they are together is because of the positive and negative uh, electrons they attract. So that positive and negative electrons. Positive protons and positive energy. charge and negative charge. Positive charge and negative charge. That's why they're together. So even if they're separated, they don't need each other. But covalent uh, charges. No, so no, no. Covalent atoms that atoms are bonded covalently. That are bonded covalently uh, need the electrons of each other. So yeah, if they separate, they don't have the complete number of electrons. Covalent. The atoms that are covalently bond, if they separate, they don't have the complete electron uh, structure. And so they are unstable. Therefore, they don't like it. They, don't, they cannot live. Okay. So uh, uh, Amar and everybody, also another thing. Sometimes I use analogies to, to make things simple for you. Okay. Sometimes I use, you know, this language like they cannot live without each other. But don't go ahead and write this in your exams. Okay, you know, if you if you get this question in the exam that you know why can co uh, why is covalent? I mean, you won't be asked this question, but you know, like don't use this language, like don't write in the exam that because the uh, you know ions cannot live without each other. That is only for you to understand. Okay, okay, so don't use the analogies in your answers. Okay, answers should be scientifically correct. Okay, okay, so the the, the scientific correct answer is that. Uh, that you know a, a covalent atom the atoms that are covalently bonded if they separate from each other they do not have the stable electron structure so they don't have the stability therefore they will not separate it's difficult to separate them as compared to ions because they have already acquired that stability it was only the attraction between the opposite charges that was keeping them together okay so these are covalent bonds and because they are so much strong they will not break. They're not gonna break in any ordinary chemical reaction. Well, there are chemical reactions that can break them. It's not like, you know, they, they can never be uh, broken, but usually under normal circumstances, they don't break, okay? So nitrate is one, carbonate is one, okay? And then we have ammonium. Uh, did I make ammonium? Yes. I made these structures for all of these ions. Ammonium looks something like this. You know, you can search and find their molecular structures, the structural formulae. Ammonium is like this. So you can see the central nitrogen atom with the four hydrogen atoms bonded to it. Hydroxide, they couple together. Okay, and they have a net negative charge. Nitrate, I've already shown you. This is sulfate. Can you see sulfur is in the middle? So can you see the positively the more electropositive is in the middle and the negatively are, I mean, the elements that are more electronegative, uh, they are surrounding it, okay? So nitride and then so on and so forth, okay? So this is how phosphate is. Phosphorus in the middle with four oxygens attached, sulfur in the middle. So the atom, which is more on the left side of the periodic table is in the center usually, is in the center. Can you see phosphorus is here, oxygen is here. So phosphorus is more on the left. So phosphorus is at the center, okay? Sulfur and oxygen. So sulfur and oxygen are on the same, but you know, oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. So the more electronegative. What do I mean by electronegative? What do I mean by electronegative? Who will, uh, who will tell me? Aisha. Aisha, what do I mean by electronegative, Vita? Yes. Aisha, I'm trying to unmute you. You have to participate. Aisha, you have to participate, okay? Yes, Uzair. Yeah, students who do not participate for like. Um, I won't be able to keep them in my class for long. Okay, Uzair. Yeah. They have the negative charge. So why do they have negative charge? Because, yes, use your common sense. Because they must have attracted an electron, right? Because they have electrons. 
Yes, electronegative means something that has greater attraction for electron that can pull the electrons more strongly. Okay? Okay. Yeah, element, uh, 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 an element that has a greater pull towards the electron is called electronegative. So you can, you can look at it this way that an element, element which is more strong, which is a stronger, can pull the electron greater. Okay? Like, you know, like there's a competition of who can pull the electron more. So the more powerful ones that can pull the electrons more are called electronegative. Which element is the most electronegative in this whole periodic table? Who's the boss here? Who's the boss in this whole periodic table? Momena, you must be knowing this. Yes, Momena? The most electronegative is fluorine, then oxygen and fluorine. Very good job. I'm so happy. Yes. Yes. So can you see electronegativity is increasing this way? Okay, electronegativity increases diagonally this way. This way. Why? Because electronegativity is increasing on as you go on the right side and as you go up. So this way. So this is on the right hand corner, fluorine. Okay, noble gases, we don't talk about noble gases because you know they have a stable electron structure already. So we don't talk about them at all. Okay, so this is more electronegative. And then on the right left, oh sorry, on the left lower corner, this is more electropositive. So if anybody asks you what is the most electropositive, it's this, francium. Francium, this is the more, most electropositive. So electronegativity increases this way, okay? And electropositivity. Electropositivity is just the opposite of electronegativity, meaning that they don't have the pull towards the electron and so they are the weakest. So, you know, Okay, so did you understand these polyatomic ions? Okay, I think I've talked enough about them. So let's move on. So now how to write their formulae? Okay, another question. So there is there are covalent bonds within the polyatomic ions, but but if I keep a cation close to this, this is calcium ion, okay? Let me do it this way. This is calcium ion and this is carbonate. They got stuck together. Why? Because they are attracting because of the positive charges. Right. So is this bond between calcium and carbonate ionic or covalent? Ionic. Say it loudly. Ionic. Why? Because they are not sharing electrons. They are not sharing electrons with each other. They are together just because of the attraction between the opposite charges. So is this an ionic compound or a covalent compound? Ionic compound. This is an ionic compound. Okay. So you might say that, hey, there's, you know, covalent bond thing going on here. So how come this is ionic? This is ionic because there is attraction between positive and negative charges. So where, whenever there is attraction between positive and negative charges, it is an ionic compound, though it might have covalent bonds within the polyatomic ion. Do you understand that? Okay, if I make this, let me make this. What is this? If I make this and then this is this. This whole thing has positive charge. Now, now this got attracted to this. This got attracted to this. Because you know, plus one minus. So they're neutralizing each other. So now, is this, now the, what bonds are these, Sidra? Covalent. Covalent. What is the bond between these two? Ionic. Ionic. So is this ionic or covalent? Ionic. This is ionic, okay? This is an ionic compound. Why? Because the positively charged ion and the negatively charged ion are attracted towards each other. 
what's keeping them together is the opposite charge attraction, right? So this is an ionic compound. So don't get confused. Now here, there is no metal. There is no metal. Did you, do you remember ionic compound? We did metal and non-metal. We learned that ionic compounds are metal and non-metal. So yeah, we usually use metal and non-metal because it is usually the metals which are positively charged and it is usually the non-metals which are negatively charged. But this is... This, this is also ionic, though this is not a metal. So basically ionic, the proper definition of ionic compound is any compound which is made up of positively charged and negatively charged particles which are kept together due to the electrostatic attraction, okay? So now let's learn how to write their formulae, okay? Let's learn how to write their formulae. So simple rule, let's do zinc sulfate okay so remember in a name in a name the first element name is always the electropositive one the one that has given an electron the one that has lost an electron and the name that comes at the end is the one that has gained an electron that has received an electron so this is negatively charged because it has received an electron this is positively charged because this has given an electron okay so how will we write this? I'm doing one for you, and then we, I will, and then you guys will t do the rest with me, okay? We will do four to five, and the rest you can do on your own. Okay, so zinc, looking at this, zinc is a transition metal, so its symbol is Z, capital Z, and small n. And remember that this was an exception, that's why I have circled it with red marker because all the transition metals have more than one charge ions except for silver and zinc. Zinc has always plus two, I'm writing it here so that you can remember, and silver has always plus one. Okay, zinc has always plus two and silver has always plus one. So plus two, okay? Okay, so this has plus two. And then sulfate, sulfate. Now, from our list of polyatomic ion, we know sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So you have to learn this list. I mean, you should, you know what? Practice, practice, and you'll learn it. That's how I did. I, you know, and when I was a student, there was, there, there was no YouTube. There was no Google. There was nothing. We did not have internet. Okay, how did we learn? We learn by practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, you learn it. So sulfate SO4 2 minus. SO4 2 minus. Now plus 2, 2 minus. Okay, remember charge should be written after the number. Charge should be written after the number. 2 plus 2 minus. So is this balanced? Yeah, they are balanced. They are balanced, okay? So no need to add or no need to add anything because they are already balanced. So I will just simply copy this as it is without the charges. So this is my final formula. Zinc sulfate, ZnSO4. Okay, I hope you understood this. Okay, lithium carbonate, Hamid 78. Lithium carbonate. I will help you. It's okay. Don't be scared. I like it that you have raised your hand. Yes? Lithium carbonate. Hamid? Where do you guys vanish when I unmute you? Okay, Abdul Rafi. Abdul Rafi? Yes? Yes, Abdul Rafib, can you please help me write the formula for lithium carbonate? Yes. Okay. Uh, lithium, do, do you have the periodic table with you? Yes. Okay, so all we need is a periodic table and this list. Okay, these are the two things you need to write the formula for polyatomic ions. These are our polyatomic ions and this is the periodic table. Okay, so lithium. Where is lithium in the periodic table, Abdul Rafi? In the first row. Right. So what charge is ions? What charge uh, on, on its uh, ion? 
plus one. Plus one. Okay. Let me grab a better marker. Okay. Lithium plus. Okay. Carbonate. Okay. I'll show you my list. Can you see the list? Yes. Yes. So carbonate. What charge is there on carbonate? Uh, two minus. Two minus. So I, when, what's the formula? Abdul Rafi? Uh, CO3, two minus. CO3, two minus. So are they electrically balanced? No. How can we balance them? By adding another lithium. Another lithium. Okay. So total of? Uh, L, uh, Li2. Very good. And CO3. CO3. Good job. Did you understand this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. We'll do three more. Okay. Uh, then now Manal. Okay, Abdul Rafi, Jazakallahu Khairan. You did a good job. Okay. Now Manal. Barium nitrate. Yes, teacher. Barium is, uh, has a BA and has a charge of plus two. Very good. Okay. Barium has plus two. And then where's my polyatomic ion list? Nitrate. Nitrate has nitrate has a, a negative charge and a three. Minus and one. O you will say minus one. Minus negative, but how much negative? I mean, how negative? Minus one, minus two, minus, minus three, one. right? Because remember, we have minus three, we have minus two. So okay. So, so okay. Tell me the formula. B A. Uh, and with the no 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 charge. what should i write here guide me what is nitrate formula no minus one charge and three but I, no this is not how you're gonna say no3 no3 first and then minus okay no3 and then minus one okay so is this electrically balanced no how can we balance it? Uh, we can add one more uh, nitrate. Yeah, okay. One more nitrate. Okay, so now, how many barium and how many nitrate? We have a BA2. Not two, because we have only one barium ion. We have only B one barium. Yes, Manal. And N O very good N O three yes because that's the formula for nitrate so you will write N O three and then there are two of them right so right uh, okay we're going to add one um, a charge of minus two no okay another thing you will not write the charges in the final formula. I am showing you the charges only in working. You will not write the for, uh, charges in the final formula. Why? Because in final formula, the charges are neutralized. Don't write charges in the final formula. See, I did not write lithium plus one here. Did I write? No. So only in working. While you are working out, you can put signs, you know, for your understanding. But in the final formula, you won't write the charges. You will only write the number of ions in the particle. You will only write the number of ions in the particle. So I won't write minus or plus here. Okay. Okay. But we have two nitrates. We have two nitrates. And this is a polyatomic ion. So we're, going to, we're going to write uh, nitrate in a bracket. Very good. Very good. In brackets. And we're going to write a small two after it. Right. Okay. Another rule that I did not tell you, I forgot. Okay, Manal, Jazakallah Khairan. You've done a wonderful job. Jazakallah Khairan. Okay. Another rule that I forgot to tell you is that whenever you have a polyatomic ion, which is more than one, you always write that polyatomic ion in brackets. And then you write down the number of that polyatomic ion, right? If there are two of them, so I will write two next to the bracket. Why am I using a bracket? This bracket shows that this is one particle. This is behaving as one particle and there are two of them. 
This is what the bracket is telling me, okay? So whenever you have a polyatomic ion, now I did not use a bracket here. Why? Because there, there was only one, so no need to write a bracket. If you put a bracket here, that would be wrong. If you put a bracket here, that would get wrong. So whenever you have a polyatomic ion, which is only one, you never put a bracket. You put a bracket when there's more than one polyatomic ion. Do you understand this? Okay, one more, ammonium nitrate. I just showed you ammonium nitrate, okay? I just showed you. Amar. Did I, have I asked you already, Amar? Amar? Yes. Have I asked you already? Yes, teacher. Okay, okay. I want to give others a chance. Okay. Fatima. Fatima 161. Yes, Fatima? Hello? Okay, Fatima, beta. Can you please help me in writing ammonium nitrate? So this is, so both the cation, ammonium, and nitrate are in the list. So can you help me write its formula? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what uh, is ammonium? First we write NH4 plus. Very good. NH4 plus, very good. And then nitrate. NO3 minus. Very good. NO3 minus. So is this balanced? No. No? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. They're balanced. Plus one, minus one. Balanced. So no need to add anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So can you help me write the final formula without the charges? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's NH4. Okay. And NO3. NO3. Do I put brackets? Um, no. No, because both of them are one. They're not more than one. So no need. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if there were two nitrates or if there were, you know, more than one ammonium, then we could have, you know, used parentheses or brackets. But because there are only one, we don't need. Okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, did you understand? Yes. Okay, let's, let's do just one more. Let's do one more. Okay, calcium phosphate. Uh, Sabiha. Sabiha, I'm trying. Yes, Sabiha. Calcium phosphate. Can you help me? Yes. Yes, okay. So, periodic table and the list of polyatomic ions. I'll show you. And you also go ahead, get this list. I can share it in the group if you want, or you can even get it from, the, from Google. Okay? Get it. Try to learn it. Okay? And there are videos that will help you, you know, mnemonics or different ways of learning, okay? So, you know, learn them. Okay, Sabiha. So, calcium phosphate. Where's, okay? Calcium I'm, is in second column. Very good. So, what's the charge? CA plus two. Very good. CA plus two. Can you please speak a little louder? Okay, and phosphor. Okay, okay. Red. I'm making a mistake here. I am making a mistake here. Please forgive me. Uh, the charge for ions should be written after the number. Okay, okay. Charge should be written after the number. This here also, I made this mistake. Okay, so okay, calcium two plus. Okay, and then phosphate. Look at this. Phosphate is. PO4 3 minus. PO4 3 minus. Okay. So is this balanced? No. Is this balanced? Can uh, So how can I balance, Sabiha? Okay. 
let's balance this it's okay sabiha it's okay calcium 2 plus and phosphate 3 minus so how can i how can i balance this three twos are six two threes are six sabiha i gave you a hint three twos are six and two threes are six so how can i balance this and another phosphate no, very phosphate. good add another and phosphate two more calcium very good sabia you're good at this very good okay so now we have three minus three minus six minus and then two plus two plus two plus so six plus right yes so now are we balanced yes yes so we are balanced so the final thing will be neutral right so okay now tell me how many calciums how many calcium ions three yes so can what will be my final formula can you help me write it calcium is going to be in brackets why why should it be in brackets because it's more than one but is it a polyatomic ion is calcium a polyatomic ion no. Polyatomic meaning is it made up of many atoms or is it a single single atom? Single no. ion? No. No, what, what do you mean no? Is it single or is it poly? Single. Single, right? We don't put brackets around single. Okay, we put brackets only around polyatomic. So okay. CA, how many? How many CA? How many calcium? Three. Three. So I will write down three. How many phosphates? Brackets, phosphate, and then two. Very good. Phosphate and then two. Why did I use a bracket here? It's a polyatomic ion. More than one polyatomic ion, right? Right, so this is calcium phosphate, okay? Did anybody help you, Sabiha, or did you do this on your own? It's okay if somebody helped you, but I want to know. I did it right now on my own. It's okay. It's okay if somebody helped you. It's fine. Tell me. I did it on my own. I was writing it? down notes, and I know how that form how to get the form. Perfect. Perfect. Mashallah, mashallah. Okay, I'm glad. Because you see, do you know that even grade 8, leave alone grade 7, grade 8 students don't know how to write this. They don't know. Because unfortunately, they don't take any classes on this. They just expect the students to know it somehow. Okay? Okay, very good. Sabiha. Okay. So you can go ahead and I have already shared this. I have already shared this. So go ahead and do the rest. Okay. And I can give you even more uh, questions and worksheets if you want in the group. Okay. Now, now let's talk about the naming of compounds. So we, we learned how to write the formulae. Now we're going to learn how to name them. You know, after we know the formula, how to name them. Okay. So just the opposite, just the reverse. First, we were writing formulae, reading the name. Now, looking at the formula, we will name them. By looking at the formula, we will name them. So simple. Again, I'm, I'm starting with type 1 binary ionic compounds. Binary means made up of only two elements. Okay, we all know this. Okay. So ionic compound, usually metal and non-metal, but basically this is positively charged cation, not necessarily metal. Usually it's metal, but not necessarily. Non-metals are anion. So basically it's cation plus anion, okay, to be specific, to be specific, positively charged and negatively charged, okay. Now anion name comes always at the last. Cation name always comes first, okay, and the anion's name ends in ied if only two elements are making it, if it is binary, if it is binary. Now the suffix can be eight, eight, but that is for polyatomic ions and containing oxygen. Remember, 
polyatomic ions containing oxygen. Can I have my list of polyatomic ions here? This. Polyatomic ions containing oxygen will be ending in eight, but we are not talking about them right now. We're talking about binary. So binary are made up of only two elements and their names will end in ide. <clears throat> ide means mean, meaning made up of only two elements, one cation, one anion. So let's do this together. This is simple. Okay, who's gonna name this? Aisha. Aisha, now this is easy, come on. You're not muting yourself, okay? Yes, Aisha? Um, yes, potassium, okay. I'm not gonna say it, sorry. So you tell me the name. What is this? This is a symbol for? Aisha, I'm waiting. Come on, Aisha. I didn't get it. You didn't get it? Are you are you Wajiha? What are you saying? Are you Wajiha? No. You did not get it? Yes. What did you not get? Can you please tell me what did you not understand? Like how to find the name. How to find what? The name. The name? Okay, you know what? Uh, you know, if that's the case, then you, did you hear I my... Did you, le le did you listen? No, so then why didn't you ask me? Why didn't you ask me? And the thing is that if you don't know how to name, then I'm sure you don't know how to write the formula either. Right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Sorry? I listened to your classes and I was. Um, I cannot hear you. Last time I even joined the class, but I don't. I don't get. Uh, I cannot hear you. Okay, if you know how to write formula, can you write the formula of iron three hydroxide for me? Do you know you have you know how to write for, for formula, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, can, can you write this formula for me? Can you tell me what is the for formula for iron three hydroxide? Can you show me the periodic table? Okay, here's the periodic table and here's the list of polyatomic ions, okay? Um, iron, can you please shut this door? I cannot hear you. Can you please be a little louder? It's so hard for me to hear you. Okay. So. Okay, you know what? I don't know what your the what the problem is uh, with you. May Allah help you. But the thing is that uh, if it is due to lack of interest if it is due to lack of interest, because lack of interest is something, lack of interest is something unforgivable, okay? If it, if it is due to lack of interest, then I will have to replace you with somebody who has interest, okay? Okay, okay, potassium chloride. Mute yourself, Aisha, and uh, you can contact me privately if you are having problem, okay? I will not allow silent, spectators here. I will not allow silent spectators in my class, okay? Because silent spectators are the ones who are very active in the chat box, okay? People who are not academically sound, this, you know, they have a lot of time on their hands to disturb. Okay, Furqan. Furqan? Aisha, you will contact me privately, okay? You will you will get your confusions cleared with me. Okay, potassium chloride. Sorry, get the man with you. Sorry. Yeah, now this. Who is this? Furqan. Please, beta, don't waste our time. Please hurry up. Furqan.
okay Farhan, you will also contact me privately on ali yeah i will yes, not sir. allow silent spectators Can okay yeah i want you to do this on ali ko2 what k2o beta name its name proper name ma'am can you show me the periodic table okay i can show you the periodic table but the periodic table does not have names only symbols symbols are already written i am asking you to name it what is this what symbol is this what is this do you, you don't have the periodic table yes yes meaning what do you have or you don't have i do not okay get it okay get a print out from google it's even at the back of your book it's even at the back of your book get it okay, okay this is okay this is potassium symbol and this is the name okay now tell me okay so this is potassium okay potassium okay i will write down potassium potassium okay potassium. and then this potassium is to, and this is ox, oxygen oxide oxide right because we will use the suffix ied ied yeah what do you mean by suffix on suffix, suffix is uh, suffix is something which comes at the end of a letter very good yes group of letters that comes at the end of the word very good i'm happy with you good job very good thank you ma'am okay uh, on also help me calcium oxide oh, oh, oh sorry <laughs> okay let's do this name this okay i will help you i will show you the periodic table it is this R B, R B, R B is this. But you forgot to say. R B is this. Can you read it? On. You muted yourself. Okay. Sariha. Sariha. Yes, Miss. Yes. Yes. Tell me, what is this? This is rubid rubidium. Very good, rubidium. Very good. Okay, so I should write rubidium, right? Yes. Right. Okay, rubidium. And then what is this? Bromide. Very good, bromide. See, if you know the system, if you know the way how to write, you can have any compound on earth. and you can write its formula and you can write its name you know people who don't know the proper way of writing the name and the formula they get scared oh this is such a difficult oh how i uh, how can i name them i did not learn this i haven't done this, this is not included no but if you know the system of how to name you can have any formula any compound on the earth and just follow the rules and you know the name simple follow the rules and simple so what's the rule here simple write down the name of the first element write down the name of the second element just add ied simple this is type 1 binary ionic compound simple okay also do this yes miss also do this okay let me ask let me ask somebody else okay miss okay let me ask somebody else zores Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Zores, beta, please help me write the name of this. So I told you the Alum yeah, aluminium aluminium oxide. Very good, aluminium oxide. Zor Zores, stay with me. Don't don't mute yourself. Okay. 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 Should we write capital letters before the names of the elements? Should we? No, we shouldn't. unless right. it is at the starting of the sentence very good very good zores bahut hi ala i'm very happy because you know i'm making this mistake i thought you will look at my 
my mistakes and you'll see uh, you'll think that it's it's the correct way no 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 i make this mistake all the time i'm i'm trying to get rid of my habit this is wrong okay this is wrong you 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 do the right way use the small letters they are common nouns they are not proper nouns they are common nouns okay now zores Z- 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 do do this with me zinc sulfide very good you get you are expert at it oh again i did the same mistake sorry zinc sulfide okay do this hydrogen wait no sodium sodium hydroxide hydroxide come on come on no oh. not hydroxide is oh oh is hydroxide this is not oh this is just simple h zor is i'm i'm giving you a hint don't follow what you have been hearing follow the rules name of the first element name of the second element add id simple so what is this so, sodium hydro very good very good yes 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 sodium sodium hydrogen dekho beta hydrogen hai na right right ji mm-hmm. em um, skip this add id hydride okay oh. skip 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 ogen and add id instead sodium hydride okay. Okay. sodium hydride sodium hydride so ab uh, now you know now if people even grade 8 people if they come across this they won't be able to name it because you know they'll say oh we have na- never come across this this is not written in the book this is not included how do i know but simple use this rule name of the first element name of the second element add i end of the story if it is made up of only two elements simple okay so with this okay. end of the class i wanted to do more we will do writing uh, the next topic is how to write the formula of covalent compounds okay we will do the uh, formula of covalent compounds and then naming of the covalent compounds in the next class okay because we are out of the we are out of time okay good job everybody i want everybody Ma- to participate yes ma'am the homework you gave us yes i have written all of it very good all diary okay now uh, so please share with me okay please share with me okay. in the the pictures the, uh, yes share with me uh, privately okay and i'm i'm very happy with people who participate positively and who also answer questions and people who uh, do work on their own and then they ask questions from what i have taught okay i have seen students who ask me random questions you know like what is ferromagnetism what is this what is that now you know like uh, there is a sea of knowledge out there I, i i cannot just you know tell you everything i'm not a know all person okay but what we have studied i w- i appreciate questions from the topics that i have covered with you if i have not don't see i have taken my exams okay don't try to test my knowledge okay i don't appreciate questions which is those questions which try to test my knowledge okay i appreciate questions from students who are trying to learn because i want to teach okay that's all okay 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 assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh